Look at the numbers below. Identify which numbers are rational and which are irrational. So just as a bit of review, just let's review what it even means to be a rational number. So this means that you can be represented as the ratio of two integers. The ratio of two integers. And if you're irrational, by definition, it just means that you, you're not rational, that you can't be represented by as the ratio of two integers. So not, not, not rational. So there's some low-hanging fruit over here, because some of these numbers are actually represented as the ratio of two integers. I'll circle those. 194 is an integer, 23,045 is an integer. Clearly the ratio of two integers, this fraction right over here. So it is rational. 1 is an integer, 8 is an integer. Clearly the ratio of two integers. So this right over here is rational as well. The other ones are a little bit less clear. Here I have 3.66, and then this dot, 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 I'm assuming means that it's going to keep repeating. So it's 3.6s, and the, six keep, the sixes keep going. More typically, or often, you'll see this represented as 3.6 with a line over just the 6 to say this keeps repeating forever. So first, I'm just going to tell you a rule. A rational number is a ratio of two integers, and any number that can be represented as a repeating, repeating, or terminating decimal terminating decimal can be represented as the ratio of two integers and therefore is rational so if you believe what i just told you that repeating decimals can be represented as it, as as the ratio of integers then 3.666 and so on and so forth the sixes keep repeating this right over here is a rational number and there's a more systematic way of converting repeating decimals into rational numbers. The way I do it involves a little bit of algebra. But just to give you to show you that this can be, I just want to give you an example. If I divide two over if I divide two by three, what is that equal to? Three goes into two, no times, but it goes into twenty. It goes into twenty six times. Six times three is eighteen. You then have a remainder of two. Bring down another zero, which is implicitly there. 3 goes into 20 six times. I think you see a pattern here. 6 times 3 is 18. Subtract. You get a 2. Bring down another 0. So 2 thirds, 2 thirds is equal to 0 0.66, and it keeps on going, which is equal to 0 0.6 repeating. So this thing over here, 3.66666, we could write this as 3 plus 2 thirds, or 3 plus 0.66666, or 3 and 2 thirds. And now this is just a mixed number. If you represent this as an improper fraction, you then have the ratio of two integers. So 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11. 11 over 3 is the same thing as 3.6666666, so on and so forth. So I showed you that it actually can be represented as the ratio of two integers. The 12 times the square root of 11 cannot be. And the simple way to recognize that is it is the square root of a of a prime number. And the square root of a prime number will always be irrational. Square root of a prime. And you can try it on in a calculator if you like, taking the square root of a prime number. But you will see that you will get a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. And so this right over here, I'll do the irrational ones in orange. This right over here is irrational. Negative 81.25. Once again, very easy to represent this as very easy to represent this as a mixed number if you want. It would be negative 81 and 25 over 100, which is the same thing as 1 fourth. And then very easy to represent this as an improper fraction. 4 times negative 81. 4 times 81 is 324. So it's negative 324, and then another negative 1. So it's negative 300, negative 325 over 4. If that confused you that I, I, I multiplied and then I had a negative 1, remember, this negative applies to everything here. It's negative 81 plus negative 1 fourth is how you should think about it. Or you could just think of it, how would I convert 81 and 1 fourth? 4 times 81 is 324 plus 1 was 325, and then you have a negative out front. But the main focus of this is, look, clearly you can represent a terminating decimal very easily as, as a ratio of two integers. And so this right over here is that's a different shade of yellow. This right over here is clearly, clearly rational. I'm doing the rationals in yellow, 
And I'm doing the irrationals in orange. Square root of 3, we have the square root of a prime number. It's going to be irrational. 1.097, terminating decimal. This is 1 in 97 over 1,000, or 97 thousandths. So clearly, clearly rational. And then pi, pi, and you'll see other numbers like pi, like e. These are, by definition, or by calculation, or however you want to think about it, these are irrational numbers. 3.14, 1, 1, and it keeps on going forever. It is non-terminating, and it is non-repeating. So it is an irrational, it is an irrational number.